Do you want to create a website spending little or no money at all? Are you a complete beginner and have zero coding experience whatsoever? Are you confused with all the overwhelming information out there? The endless tools, plugins, website platforms, and you just don't know where to start? Well, this video is for you. I'm going to teach you how to create a website from scratch without any coding whatsoever. And you'll look like an absolute pro doing it too. I guarantee at the end of this video, your confidence will skyrocket and that website you've long desired will all of a sudden be within your reach. Welcome and tune in. Hi everyone, it's Mark here from Making Websites Easy. No coding required. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, please hit the subscribe button. Our videos would teach you how to make your own website as well as show you all the neat tips and tricks to make it look stunning, all with minimal effort and without writing a single line of code. Now let's get started, shall we? This video will take you through the process we took in building our own website from the ground up, starting from the standard boring WordPress default theme, which is what you're seeing right now, into this beautiful product. Something that's not just achievable by professional web designers, but achievable by anyone, including yourself, even if you have no website building experience whatsoever. And we didn't build this from scratch. We'll show you exactly how we did it. All it took was four easy steps, which we'll explain now. Step one is to get a domain name and set up hosting. The domain name is the address to your website. For example, ours is makingwebsiteseasy.com. We also set up hosting for the website all in one step. Traditionally, getting a domain name and setting up web hosting is done separately and through different services. However, as you'll see later on, the service that we use from Bluehost, which will be our web hosting provider, they facilitate the whole process of getting a domain name and setting up your hosting all in one seamless step. Step 1.5 is to install WordPress. WordPress is what we'll use to manage the content that we'll create, which consists of pages, posts, images, videos, etc. We've numbered this step 1.5 simply due to the fact that it is done automatically upon setting up the hosting with Bluehost. Step 2 is to install a website builder called Elementor. This is a game-changing tool that will allow anybody, and I mean anybody, to create a website that looks professionally done with a minimal amount of effort and best of all without touching or writing any code whatsoever. Step 3 is to install a theme called Astra. Astra is a base theme structure that is fully customizable with the Elementor website builder. It is lightweight, efficient, and fast, and is made with a smaller online footprint to make it load faster. It forms the basis for our next step, which is Step 4. Install a website template called Astrosites. As the name suggests, Astrosites provides a library of website templates that we can use as a starting point for building our website. Templates include pre-made pages for about page, contact page, services page, etc. And all these pages work hand in hand with Elementor and are easily customizable to create our own unique look and feel for our website. Step one, domain and hosting. More likely than not, when you create a WordPress website or any website for that matter, step number one is to figure out what your domain name will be. Whilst there's no prescribed way of choosing your domain name, we'd recommend choosing something that obviously resonates with the subject of your website. For example, if it was going to be a blog about beautiful travel places, then something like beautifulplaces.com would be my first option. However, good domain names are hard to come by, so you have to be extremely unique while still representing the topic your website will be about. If you already have a domain name in mind, use our domain name checker on our website. The link is provided in the description below. You can use this domain name checker to determine whether the domain name you have in mind is available. 
Turns out beautifulplaces.com is already taken. Now, I would always recommend registering a .com over a .net or .org as they are usually more sought after. If you're struggling to think of a suitable domain name for your website, I would highly recommend you head over to thesaurus.com and look for synonyms for either the word beautiful or places to help me find my domain name, for example. I might even interchange and play with the order of the words, aiming for no greater than three words within the domain name. So what I'm doing right here is trying to look for an alternative for beautifulplaces.com. My initial play here is to look for a synonym for beautiful. Delightful, elegant, magnificent. I'm going to click on that for more suggestions. Hmm. I like grand. I'm thinking grandeur. Monumental, marvelous. I don't know. I think I like grandeur. Now, I can already imagine a take on the popular phrase of grandeur, you know, something like something of grandeur, you know, something along those lines. So I'm going to move on to looking for a synonym for places. I tried places of grandeur, but that domain name has already been taken. So that's why I'm, I'm looking for an alternative for places. None of these seem to satisfy what I'm looking for. So I'm going to try locations instead. I've also checked the availability of locationsofgrandeur.com, but that domain name is already taken. Scenes. Hmm, I like that. Scenes of grandeur. That seems to flow well. I can then go back to our domain name checker and determine whether scenesofgrandeur.com is available. And indeed it is. We can then proceed by clicking on the next button. Bluehost provides options for web hosting packages for the website that we will be creating for this domain name. We first enter our details and then select a web hosting package. For three years, they charge a measly $3.95 per month, paid on an annual basis, so just under $48 per year. If you were to opt for just one year, it would come to about $71 annually, which is still a great deal. But of course, you save more if you register for more than one year. Seriously, I cannot understand how Bluehost can charge so little for services that are extremely amazing and competitive. Now, the only other option I would recommend is domain name protection. This basically protects the identity of the domain name owner from anyone wishing to run a Whois search against your domain. To demonstrate, navigate to whois.domaintools.com on your browser address bar. Once there, search for michaeljordan.com. If you scroll down, you'll notice details revealing the contact information of the person who registered the domain, which quite often includes their residential address. And this one doesn't even belong to the basketball legend himself. Now, if you don't opt for domain name protection, this information becomes public by default and can easily be retrieved using this method. Google also indexes this information as well, meaning if someone searches for your domain name, it'll show up in Google's search results. Let's have a look at another example. Search for our website's domain, makingwebsiteseasy.com, and you'll find our details have not been revealed. What you will find is generic information detailing that it is under domain privacy protection. The service only adds 99 cents to your monthly fees and is well worth the value. And that's it. Once you've purchased your hosting, you need to set your Bluehost password. The process then asks you to select a theme. However, I would recommend skipping this step since we will be installing our own theme later on. Here we actually move on to step 1.5, install WordPress. We have numbered the step 1.5 because the actual process of installing WordPress is done automatically since Bluehost does this for you in the background. So that is actually quite awesome. We've basically purchased our hosting with a free domain name and installed WordPress in one whole step.
Now, at the same time, Bluehost will begin setting up the server for your website and may take a little time before you can access it from your selected domain name. However, in the meantime, you can still begin working on your website via a temporary Bluehost generated domain. Once your server is ready, the migration to your domain name will happen automatically. Now, before we move on, I'd like to talk a little bit about WordPress. It powers about 30% of all the websites on the internet. Now that's a lot of websites and that provides a strong indication that it is the leading website platform. WordPress is a CMS, which stands for Content Management System. That basically means that it gives us the tools to create posts and articles that the platform will manage for us. These tools that are under the WordPress hood come in the form of code, plugins, and themes. The theme allows us to change its look and feel, the paint color, and the structure of the sections of the website, if you will. Plugins add features and function to the website, similar to a washing machine or an air conditioner adds function to a house. Now what you see here is the WordPress dashboard, and you will interact with this a lot. Don't let all the menu items on the left overwhelm you, as it is very intuitive and very easy to navigate. Like most things new, everything has a learning curve. The more you acquaint yourself with these new elements, the more they will make sense if it doesn't already. Each dashboard item is quite self-explanatory the majority of the time. In time, creating your own WordPress website will become second nature, especially when coding is not involved. From a technical standpoint, a website is quite simple. It is made up of content, images, and code. We will of course be dealing primarily with content and images, and WordPress makes it easy to organize and manage the content you create. All websites are unique and have their own flavor. However, regardless of this, each one manages their information very similarly. Step 2. Install a website builder, Elementor. The Elementor plugin is a tool you'll need to build your website with ease. In order to install it, we need to add a new plugin. We then perform a search for Elementor. The first result is what we're after. We'll install and activate it. Now we've just installed the free version of Elementor. Whilst this free version is capable of a lot of things, it does not include certain features that add a lot more oomph to your website. Features such as animated headlines, slides, pricing tables, contact forms, media carousels, etc. Now, these features are only at the tip of the iceberg. If you want to be able to use them on your website, you need to purchase the Elementor Pro license, which costs $49 per year, which is peanuts considering the features that they offer. I would personally recommend purchasing the Pro plugin simply due to the fact that it's an extremely low cost investment with the potential for creating amazing websites in the future. Follow the link below if you'd like to make the purchase. Step 3. Install a theme. Astra. To add the Astra theme, we need to be in the Themes Appearance menu. We then need to scroll down and select Add New Theme. Then we perform a search for the Astra theme, and then select Install. We can then activate the theme so that we can use it as the base theme for the Astrocytes plugin that we'll install next. This is how the website looks after installing the Astro theme. The Astro theme is extremely customizable and lightweight and forms the basis for building our website from the ground up with the focus on speed, efficiency, and a small online footprint to keep it as lightweight and as fast as possible. The next step is to install the Astrocytes plugin. Step 4. Install a website template, Astrocytes. Let's head on over to the dashboard. Let's first hover over to the plugins menu and click add new. Next, let's search for the Astrocytes plugin.
The first result is what we're after, Astra starter sites. As the description suggests, the plugin provides website templates that you can base your very own website on. Each template contains a starting point for different pages on a website, such as the home page, contact page, and about page. It works hand in hand with Elementor as well, which is awesome. So without further ado, let's go ahead and install it. And then we activate it. Navigating through our list of plugins, let's scroll down to the Astra starter sites and view the library of templates that comes with it. Select Elementor as our website builder, and then we're presented with all of the starter website templates fully customizable with Elementor. Let's filter by free templates since we want to spend the minimal amount of money to get started. And by the way, the free ones are still quite amazing. Okay, let's, let's take a look here. This one looks quite good. Let's preview this and see how it looks. Yeah, I think I'm liking what I see here. Let's keep looking. This one looks pretty cool. Let's check this one out. Regardless of which one you select, you really can't go wrong with any of these to be quite honest. This one looks quite amazing as well. It's got a great layout. It's simple. It's got a great design. But I think I'll go with the Sierra Nature as it fits quite well with the website we want to build. It's simple, straight to the point, and there's no fluff. Let's go ahead and install it. Now, bear in mind, there's a section here that tells us this theme requires these plugins to work. So all we need to do is just install them. Now that they're installed and active, let's import the template site. The result of importing this starter website is that we will have a structure of predefined, pre-created website pages that we can base our own website on. Before this process starts, a message will pop up to inform you of a few disclaimers, which talk about risk of content and data loss. Now, if you can imagine, importing a whole bunch of web pages onto your WordPress website may override your current website. But since we have a fresh install of WordPress, this doesn't really matter to us, so we can continue on with the process without anything to worry about. So let's go ahead and hit OK. This begins the process of importing all of the pages that come with the Sierra Nature template that we selected earlier. Bear in mind, this may take a few moments. Sweet, it's done. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this website looks like now. So as you can see, it looks exactly like what the preview showed us earlier. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the other pages that were imported during the process. So first we'll head over to the dashboard and select the pages menu. This will display a list of all of the predefined pages that currently exist on the website. Let's view the about page. blog page,
contact page. Projects page. And services page. Now, of course, these are all starting points for our pages, and indeed, they are great starting points. However, we'd like to make this website more unique and more customized. With that being said, I think it's time to showcase Elementor and show you exactly what it is capable of. And I think you guys will be excited. Let's begin by modifying the home page. Let's click on Edit with Elementor for the home page. The Elementor Website Builder. Now this is where the magic happens. Elementor is a WYSIWYG Website Builder. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And that essentially means is rather than editing the web page on a text editor, we are given the convenience of being able to edit directly on the page itself. And you see this happening as we drag and drop elements onto this home page, as well as being able to click on certain areas to edit text, such as headings and descriptions. First, we'll right click on the hero section, and then we'll click on style on the controls menu. What I wanna do here is I would like to instead use a video as a background. So I'm gonna head over to videos pexels.com. This is an awesome website for finding videos that can be used commercially for free. How awesome is that? I'm going to do a search for mountains and find a video that's suitable for our website. Now this one's pretty cool. It's not too short and it's not too long. This will add a great wow factor for our website. Let's, let's go ahead and download it. I've now gone ahead and added this video to our media library. In order for us to use this video as part of our hero section, I need to copy the URL of the media. This is basically the location of the media on your website server. We can then paste that video URL that we copied in the video link field for the hero section background. Nice. This is turning out awesome. I'm just going to do a few touch-ups to get it looking right. There we go. Now let's move on to editing the hero title. We simply click inside, highlight and begin editing. The title I'm going to use for the home page is simply our website title, Scenes of Grandeur. I'll also modify the subheading. Now I'm just going to make minor adjustments to the hero title. Notice when I change the size of the title, you see the results immediately. That is awesome. Now, I kind of like my titles a little bit bigger and spread out vertically. Okay, now to find a font family that I'm happy with. Now, I'm quite picky, so it took me a while to find something that was suitable, something that I liked. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. What do you guys think? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a little bit of fun. To add columns of data, we need to add an element called inner section. Let's go ahead and drag this element into the new section. By default, this element has two columns, and we can add more by simply right clicking on the column icon and selecting add new column. So here I'm just showing the ability to add another row of columns. The next thing we'll do is add a heading to this section. Just simply drag and drop. Let's center it and then add some padding to the top and the bottom. Next, we'll add a subheading. Here, I'm demonstrating drag and dropping image elements into the columns. However, I don't want to repeat this eight times for each row and column item. So I start again with a single row and a single column with a single image element inside. Okay, 
Now, what I'd like to do is add a heading and a description for this particular column of information. Make a few adjustments to the heading. Add a text editor element below for our description. And then we can adjust the padding just a little bit, just to make it look a little bit more presentable. Once we're happy with the column, we can proceed by duplicating this, simply by right-clicking on the column icon and clicking on Duplicate. Once I've got the four columns that I initially wanted, I'm going to duplicate this entire section to create yet another row of columns. And there we have it. Now it's time to populate each of the image elements. I'm going to go to pexels.com for some inspiration. I'm going to search for mountains because usually they make for quite stunning scenes. So let's fast forward this a little bit while I acquire a few images. I've downloaded eight images free for commercial use and populated each of the image elements on each column. Now that's looking quite sweet actually. What I'd like to do next is rather than having square images, I would like to reshape these into circles. In order for me to do this, I would need to navigate to the style tab of each image element and specify a border radius for each corner of the image. I choose a big enough border radius to give me the circular shape that I want. I repeat this process for the other seven images. Next, I'm going to tackle this section of three columns on the home page. What I want to showcase here is the ability for Elementor to add transitions to elements. But before we do that, let's update these images with our own. I'll head over to pexels.com for some more inspirational imagery. I'm going to fast forward this process and see you on the other side. After finding some beautiful elements, I begin uploading them and use them for each image element. I then make a few slight adjustments to the text. Now comes the exciting part. I'm going to add a transition, namely an entrance animation, to the first column. Click on the top left column icon, navigate down to entrance animation, and select the animation that you'd like to use. Now, it's called Entrance Animation because when you scroll down to this section of the home page, you will see this element slide up into view, creating a nice visual effect. I'm going to do exactly the same to the other columns. However, I would like to delay the transitions by a quarter of a second increments to create a staggering effect. We can also set the animation to be fast or slow. I like mine set to normal. Let's update our changes and view the website. Now you'll see when we scroll down to the section we just edited, you'll notice the transitions we added add a nice visual effect to the website. Elementor makes this process so easy. Now, I've made the color of the call to action button in the hero section to be green. However, I would like to do the same to the call to action button on the bottom of the home page. So I'll simply copy the color that I used and scroll down and use it on the other button. And then I copy the color that is used when I hover over the button. And then apply this hover color to the button below. Now let's make the about page a bit more unique to our website. In a similar way to the home page, we'll edit it with Elementor. Let's begin by changing the background image of the title section. Let's next scroll down to the counter element. It is primarily used to highlight to the website reader of a company's milestones and achievements. Let's next play around with this two column section here. Let's add a background image to the first column. 
and then make some slight adjustments to the position of the image. Let's make this look a little nicer by adding a, a bit of margin at the top. And then we'll change the color of the text to make it pop out a little bit more. Now to make it stand out a little bit more, we'll make the background a little darker by adding a background overlay. And then we can adjust the opacity to our own preferences. Now, what I don't like is the empty space to the top and the bottom of this section. I can simply set the top and bottom padding for this section to be zero. As a result of removing the padding from the top and the bottom, this section is looking a little lacking in height. So I'm going to edit the right hand column and add some padding to the top and the bottom. I'll also do something similar to the left hand column to make it a little bit more presentable. I'd like to add something cool below this, like a testimonial carousel. However, this element does not come with the free version of Elementor. We have to purchase a yearly subscription in order to use it. However, for $49 per year, which works out to be about $4 per month, I think it's totally worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase an Elementor Pro license, and I'll see you on the other side. Now that I have purchased, downloaded, and installed the Elementor Pro plugin, we can then continue editing our About Us page. So let's scroll down to the point where we want to add this testimonial carousel element. Let's drag and drop the element. We can change the skin of the element to look like a bubble. We can also reposition the image and the author of the testimonial. We can position them stacked above the bubble or to the left or to the right. I like the stacked configuration. We can, we can also vary the width of the bubble. Now, bear with me as I customize the author image and testimonial. Now that we've completed the testimonial carousel, I think we're about done with this page. So let's go ahead and update it and have a look at it live. And there we have it, just beautiful. Now we're almost there. The last thing I'd like to do is replace the default navigation menu that comes with the Astro Starter site with a customized one using the Elementor navigation menu element. From the dashboard, let's click on Appearance, Customize, Select the edit icon on navigation menu. The left panel will display configuration options for the menu. The option we want to select is disable menu and also to remove the call to action button. Okay, we're done. Now let's go ahead and create our own customized navigation menu using the Elementor element. In order to achieve this, we need to create a new template a template is basically a structure that is used in multiple pages of your website. So for example, we will be creating a header template that will contain our navigation menu. So the type of template we will be creating is a header. Let's give it the name navigation menu. Elementor will present you with a predefined list of headers that you can use as a starting point. However, I would like to start from scratch. To create the navigation menu, we first need to add a section to contain it. And then we'll drag and drop the nav menu element into the section. And in doing so, the primary menu for the website is displayed. Now let's align this to the right. You can reposition the navigation menu items vertically. However, this is more suitable to the mobile version of the website. We can also adjust the hover highlighting. And also the hover animation. 
Next, we'll add some color. Adjust the font and add some padding. Now let's add a box shadow to the section to add a little bit of depth. And increase the shadow blur just a tad. Now at the moment, when we scroll down, the header disappears from view. However, I'd like to change this so that as we scroll down, the header remains fixed at the top. In order to achieve this, we need to go to the advanced tab of the section and expand the scrolling effect option and select top for the sticky option. As we scroll down, you'll notice the menu sticks to the top. Now at the moment, this nav menu section is completely transparent. Let's change this and add a white background and add a touch of transparency. Nice. Okay, I think what we need now is a logo up here on the top left. So we'll create a new column to contain it. Okay, now we can drop in the site logo element. And because we've based our website on the Sierra Nature starter site, we still have the default Sierra Nature logo set. And we can adjust the size for now. Now I'm going to go to canva.com to create my logo. Canva is a valuable tool for graphic designers, and it is perfect for logo creation as well. You'll see that even with the free version of Canva, I can create an awesome logo in no time at all. Canva provides lots of free templates that we can use as a starting point. I kind of like this one. Let's drag and drop it on our blank canvas. Now, because the background color of our header is white, I'd like to invert these colors so that the graphic in the middle is green and the background is white. Next, I'd like to use the same green color that we used for the menu items on the website. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and go back to Canva and use it as the color for my logo. Awesome. Now let's tidy this up a little bit and change the text of the logo to match the name of our website. Next. I'd like to change the leafy graphic in the middle with something more suitable. So I'm going to search for mountain in the graphic library here. This one right here is perfect. Let's drop this in our canvas and remove the other graphic. Let's go ahead and resize this and reposition in the middle. And then we can update the color. Nice. This logo is looking pretty sweet. Let's resize the size of the logo to fit the size of the canvas. This ensures that when we export the logo as an image, we avoid any white areas surrounding the perimeter of the image. Let's download this new logo and head back over to our header template. We can then replace the default Sierra Nature logo Awesome, it's coming together. Let's resize it until it's just about right. And then realign it to the left. Now in order for us to use this header on all our pages, we need to come down here, select the arrow, and click on display conditions. Here we can add a condition to specify where this header will appear on our website. I'm going to select entire site and hit publish. Our header, our new header is now live. Let's go and take a look. And there's our header containing our navigation menu with a transparent background and a customized logo from Canva. Awesome. Now I'm actually going to further modify this header so that the logo is in the middle and half of the navigation menu is on the left and the other half to its right. 
So I'm going to add a new column and reposition the logo in the middle column. Next, let's click on the menus item under appearance in our dashboard. Here, we create and manage the menus we use throughout our website. This is a list of all our menu items currently in our navigation menu. What I'd like to do is separate these into two groups. One group containing the home, about, and services menu items, and the other group containing projects, blog, and contact menu items. So let's create a new menu and call it main menu right. Let's select projects, blog, and contact and click on add to menu. This will add the three items to the menu structure. Let's head back over to the previous menu. Since we created the other menu to contain the projects, blog, and contact menu items, we can then remove them from this one. Let's rename this menu to main menu left since these menu items will be positioned on the left hand side of the header. Let's go ahead and save this menu. We'll then navigate back to our header template. Notice on the right hand side that the three menu items that we removed have disappeared from view. Let's duplicate this menu and drag it over to the left hand side. Let's then select main menu right to the rightmost navigation menu like so. And the menu items that we added to main menu right will appear. And we're done. And now it's time to view the finished website. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of these in the future, please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you in the next video.